Let me get a Let me get a heat check, 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 heat Can I get a heat check, heat check, uh, heat check, yeah, heat check, yeah, yeah, heat check, heat check What up SML? Welcome back, SML Heat Check coming at you for another week recapping uh, the latest action in the SML. I'm joined today by uh, by the Mad Bomber and by the Heat Check Darlene himself. We've got terrible two step. Um, I've been hyping this guy up uh, all season to a little bit less success than I would prefer, but uh, but he's here in in fl- in the flesh. Uh, how you doing, buddy? What's going on? Good. How you guys doing today? Oh. Doing well. Can't complain. Yeah, he's hey, I got slow, you back but... yesterday, though. I got a win yesterday there. Yes, yes. Very excited about that. <laughs> um, I've I've been watching. I'm like the uh, that Star Wars meme. I will watch your career with with great interest. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, my my bold predictions aren't going quite as well as Mad Bombers, but there's still some hope. Um, They're bold the, for a reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so I, I guess with that, we'll we'll jump right in. Um, what's what's so? Let's give us the rest of the the season outlook here for the the SML Bengals. Obviously, I I came out predicted you to uh, to win the the AFC North. Um, Rocky start, but you know we're back in the win column here. So, is there cause for concern? Is this all part of the plan? How how are we looking in Cincy? I would love to say it was part of the plan, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I just when it snow it snowballs on me. I throw one pick and it just goes downhill from there. I got to start learning to take what the defense has given me, not try to take any more. Yeah, I definitely hear you on that. Um, I've uh, had some recent experience dabbling in that area as well <laughs> um which of course we'll we'll get to later in the show here um usually yeah, I'm, so- a, I'm a i'm a run first team usually and this is the actually the first time i've had a quarterback a decent quarterback so i'm you know got to try it out a little bit but it's not doing too well <laughs> yeah sometimes the good quarterback is is a blessing and a curse um i've always noticed that if I have like a worse quarterback, I can rein my offense in a little bit. I play smarter. I turn the ball over less because I'm not trying to do too much. You get that good guy. And sometimes it's just, it's tempting. Like you just want to go for it. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I, I totally get that. Um, what are your thoughts on, I've, I've seen in chat a little bit, Bomber and I have talked about it. The, uh, the Foz curse here, obviously I, I predicted you to win. I predicted prime to go 16 and zero, and he lost within like 15 minutes. Um, <laughs> so, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? Is that, is that a real thing? Is that, is the pressure getting to you? Uh, I don't believe it's a real thing. There's no such thing as curses. Um, I just, I, I just got to play better, plain and simple. Nothing that you said about me, nothing that, you know, it's just my game plan has got to be changed. Yeah, I hear you. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Cause I definitely don't want to go around, you know, cursing guys, especially <laughs> cool guys like yourself. Um, so, you know, may, maybe I'd start to curse some some NFC North opponents if uh, <laughs> if I had that kind of power. <laughs> put a curse on NYT and Woods if you'd like. Okay, hey, we can, we can work on that. I can, I can bump them up my rankings. We'll get to that later. <laughs> yes, we will. <laughs> we'll, we'll start testing that out. Um, so, yeah, that's that's all the questions I got for you. If you you got anything for him, Bomber, you want to jump right into, yeah, let's, into some recaps? Let's, uh, we'll jump into the recaps and uh... – this is going to be a surprise to you, but at the end, I've also got our bold predictions that we can go over and see how we're doing with that. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> but we'll start with a uh, with our recap on Daddy Leagues for. Uh, oh, there we go. So our recap for Daddy Leagues, we've got weeks uh, four, five, and six, and we've only had one game played so far in uh, in week seven, so we can we can touch on that too. But uh, week four, we had the Bengals. Two step didn't uh didn't help your prediction against the Ravens. That one was forty three to twenty one. Uh, Buccaneers and the Cowboys. This one was pretty close. It was Graham's uh, and we went over. I think this one last last heat check because this one had played early. But Graham's almost beat the Buccaneers. Ended up losing that in uh, overtime. Had the Falcons beat the Eagles. Not a surprise. Right now everyone's beating the Eagles. Um, you had the Browns. Browns come out and get a big win over the Jets right after Paulie says that the Jets are in his top 10, uh, 59-14. Yeah. Uh, Panthers beat the Seahawks 17-14. to I'm not sure if that game was simmed or or what. Um, I think there was something went on with that one, like they disconnected. 
Uh, Dan came out and beat the Texans 35-21. I'll have to go back and watch that because I've got the Texans tomorrow. Study uh, up that game film. Yeah, got to get got to get studied up for the uh, the Texans. The Bills beat the Steelers, so so Noel gets back in the win column. KJ remains in the uh, loss column, which KJ, by the way, is the only two time uh, recipient of the worst team in the league uh, <laughs> award. I assume if you're the player of the week, the guy on the other end is the worst worst player of the week, and uh, KJ is the first two time recipient of that award. So I mean, there's something, bad, man. something to be proud of, I guess. Uh, <laughs> He's, he's got a trophy. That's right. He's, he's got trophy a trophy. Uh, Cardinals, big win over the Saints, 54 or, yeah, fifty-four to 34. So that's helping my bold prediction of the Saints being a 10-loss team. They're already halfway there. Uh, I beat the Chargers, 31-6. to six. Uh, Patriots beat the Packers, 21-17. Raiders over the 49ers, 49-45. Rams over the Giants, 42-28. And then uh, one of the games that was a big one, Washington beats the Colts 45 42 destroys your bold prediction of a 16 and 0 Colts team and, all because uh, of a PI Hail Mary the heck out of here Madden <laughs> yeah the ending of that game was really fun to watch <laughs> and then the broken the broken tackle hero yep. run unbelievable watching a uh, former Jaguar Melvin Gordon take off in overtime for the win <laughs> was nice especially when I was having trouble finding a running game there he is sitting on my bench apparently but uh, and then the Vikings, you beat the Bears thirty-eight to seven, and what's quickly becoming less of a rivalry than it was in season one. <laughs> um, so then here we go. So now we're into week five, and this is games that we hadn't yet talked about. Uh, obviously, the big game of the week was the Colts and the Broncos, and and Prime beat Dan pretty handily. I don't, I don't think anybody saw that coming. Maybe, maybe Prime or Paulie will say they saw it coming, but I, I gotta believe. I don't think Prime thought it was gonna be that big of a win. Uh, he did try to, I think, hang 50 on him, and it cost him towards the end. It let Dan get a little closer, but I don't think the game was ever really in jeopardy. Yeah, I'd say the the score, I mean, obviously, a, you know, a 10-point game, you would think that, that was pretty back and forth for most of it, but it was pretty much never back and forth. Yeah, I, I think it was like 31-14 to 14 or 31-7 yeah. at one point, and it yeah. just kind of came back. Yeah, it was back. pretty ugly there. Uh, the Chargers, they lost to the Titans. Again, Titans, I can't figure uh, figure Coop out, or maybe Coop can't figure Coop out because he'll have a really good game and then he'll lose to teams that he shouldn't. Coop uh, is a coin flip. That's what I'm getting out of like the show. Like the Bengals. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the Bengals. And coming <laughs> off, but you have two wins last season at the end against the Ravens and the Browns. And then this season's been a slow start. But uh, the Dolphins fell to the Patriots. So when Matt came in the league, we heard how good he was and – and he wasn't really impressing anybody with the uh, end of last season as the Patriots, but uh, I think he's he's caught some people's attention with a 31-24 win over the Dolphins. Yeah, more more on him coming. <laughs> okay. I, th- I think that Pat's roster is a tough roster to start with, too. Yeah, and, and I know he tried to make some moves in the offseason, but everyone looked at the roster and was like, you don't have anything <laughs> I want. Uh, he'd already lost his first-round pick to uh, to Dan when Figs traded for Locke. So he didn't have that, and then just the rest of the roster wasn't really that appealing. Uh, but he did pick up Rashard Penny in uh, in free agency and seems to be doing pretty well with him. Yeah, the uh, the main thing with that team is you just the defense is good at like one specific thing, so as long as you don't deviate from that, the personnel set up for what they need to be. Yeah. Um, but on offense, it is definitely uh, pretty pretty devoid of talent. Yeah, he's, he's going to be run heavy for a while. Yeah. Uh, then we had... Uh, the Bills beat the Lions. Nobody cares. Uh, <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Washington. Uh, no one might care. Uh, Washington takes on the Packers, and Mike keeps it pretty close, but Washington pulls away 19-14. to 14. So, like I said, this Washington team put up 45 on Prime and then puts up 19 on Mike. I don't think the defenses are that different. I don't know what happened that game, but he's, he's kind of up and down right now. But – Five and one, he's still on the winning side most of the time. Yep. Uh, and then one of the surprise games, we actually talked about this before you showed up 20 minutes late. Um, the <laughs> Chiefs. <laughs> Nobody needed to know that. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't want anybody to, to not know it. Uh, so the Chiefs, Fair enough. 28 to seven over Future and the Raiders. Um, we had just talked about, oh, Future's back, Future's back. And then ZZ hangs 28 on him and almost wins player of the week against Future. So 
Yeah, no. holding them to seven. Honestly, I mean, it's not like the Chiefs' defense is is loaded with talent. So only yeah. only scoring seven on them, especially you got Rugs, you got Jacobs. That's a that's a curious outcome. Yeah, I was I was definitely shocked to see that. Uh, another one that's going to be a close game or a close season cycle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Cardinals Rams in one of what's going to be a bunch of matchups, twenty to seventeen. So this was a good one, but Meats ended up on top. Uh, then in in two steps division. The Browns, another big win, but this time instead of the Jets, it's the Steelers, 45-7. to seven. Uh, I believe this was KJ's second time being on that least good player of the week, 45-7. Uh, to seven. Cowboys over the Texans, 24-7. to seven. So Grams, Grams has been uh, playing pretty well in the games he should win, and we'll, we'll talk more about him later. Uh, and here's where the Vikings slide starts, 20-10 to 10 against Rowan. Dalvin Cook, five carries on the game. Uh, kind of the same thing we saw in the Super Bowl where you should have ran Dalvin Cook more. I think you may have had that same problem here. Uh, maybe, just maybe. Uh, Bears Bears over the Eagles, 31-28. Uh, this one, two-step, had the Buccaneers in Week 5, and I don't think the score is uh, does it justice. 37-6, to six, but we were talking about this uh, before when you were 20 minutes late. <laughs> and uh two step getting, did pretty well driving the it. ball he had what'd you say two or three red zone turnovers yeah three at least um, so definitely I was gonna say it was at least three yeah definitely the the ability to move the ball on him so i don't know why teams aren't having more success against the buccaneers but he, he does end up on the winning side every time so dookie definitely has a knack for coming up with big plays um which helps disguise a lot of poor plays that lead up to that one play. Yeah. Um, so that that's usually if you go back and watch his games, you can pretty much pinpoint, you know, the turn to like one thing. Um, and that's pretty much exactly what happened with two step. He was, you know, you were controlling the game. Honestly, um, you were kind of holding them on defense. You were driving, moving the ball at will. And then it would come down to, uh, I think he got hit sticked once. I think two users um, and every one of them was within like, the seven yard line, I think. Yep. So, right uh, down there, yep. Yep. And yeah, don't get me wrong, it's that's a hard spot. It's a hard spot on the field. Um, but you know, that's that's the kind of thing with Zuki's games where if you know two of those plays goes the other way, we're looking at probably a totally different outcome. Yep, I agree. Yeah, well the, the red zone's tough, especially against that team when he's got Devin yep. White who's ridiculously fast. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you're at the fifty yard line, he can cover you know, a small portion of the field. But when you get down to the goal line, he's covering the majority of the field yeah. you have to work with. So yeah, yeah. It makes it real tough for you. But uh, the next up was the Panthers, 41-28 over the Saints. Colt, keeping my dream alive. Uh, <laughs> and we have the Ravens, 30-23 to over the Falcons. Uh, Lawyer kind of just blending into the, the rest of, like, the middle of the pack there. Uh, he's at 3-3 three and three right now. But – uh. NYT moved up to four and four and one, I think, with that game. I'm not sure what his record was after that one, but he's at four and three now. Uh, so moving on, week six, we had the Buccaneers taking on the 49ers. I thought I thought Dump would give him a little more trouble with Mostert in his run game, but uh, Dukey had no problems. 38-14. Um, that was uh that felt like a classic Dump game where you watched the first interception happen and you were like, oh no. Yeah. Like this is this is how it's going to snowball, and sure enough, that is exactly what happened. Because I think the next play, he threw a, a pick six. Yeah, and um, dumps another one we're going to talk about uh, when we get to our yeah. our rankings. But um, we had another another good game that week. Seems like we've had a, uh, and I think this is the week where we had a bunch of good games. Uh, we had the Broncos taking on the Cardinals 28-24. Dan beat uh beat meets, so the Cardinals having a lot of trouble with the AFC this cycle. Uh, at least the top end of the AFC. They've kept it close, I think, just about all the games, but just don't end up on the winning side. Mm -hmm. And then and then uh, my favorite team, Washington, 42-14 over the Giants. Again, just you know, couldn't couldn't score against Mike, but then he he scores against the Giants, which you would expect, but then he puts up uh, a, an impressive defensive performance, giving up only 14 to the Giants team that we talk about every week can score pretty much on anyone. Um, so maybe he's figuring things out with that team. 
the football team's all over the place. I'm not going to feel confident about any prediction involving them for the rest of the season, probably. <laughs> no, I feel confident about one prediction. It's a very bold prediction, yeah. but we'll get to it. <laughs> uh, then we have the, uh, the Colts beat the Jaguars. Nobody cares about that. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, we have the Bears. Bears over the Saints. Colt, keep it up. Uh, Bengals beats the Titans. That was a, that was a good win for the. We Bengals. did it, fam. Yes, Maybe th- things are starting to turn around in Cincinnati. It's uh, amazing what no turnovers can do for you. That's a big key. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of Speaking turnovers, of no turnovers, uh, this next game: <laughs> Patriots over the Vikings, twenty-eight uh, fourteen. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, currently currently running. I've been going through some offensive personnel changes. I'm currently running the Helen Keller offense. Um, hmm. If anyone's <laughs> in search of a new offense, I would not suggest it. It's yeah. not good. I would stay stay pretty clear of that one. I think you're still gonna eventually, eventually figure it out. But I know just from personal experience, yeah, maybe, the last two seasons, you start getting time. in that losing streak, and everything feels feels bad. Yeah, um, yeah, need... it'll start to help if I uh, if I open my eyes while I play. We'll we'll see. That generally <laughs> uh, improves your gameplay by like thirty percent or something. I saw. Yeah, at least thirty. Yeah, at least. Uh, speaking of thirty percent gameplay, the Bills over the Jets, thirty-five to fourteen. Another another big AFC East matchup. Uh, Cowboys over the Eagles, 34-31. Now, as good as Grams has been playing, he comes out and just squeaks by an Eagles team that really hasn't done anything this season or last. Um, Dolphins get back in the win column with a 31-10 win over the Packers. Uh, Future beats up on the... Uh, the league bottom feeder, the Lions, forty-two to twenty-seven. I feel we were just talking about the Lions guy earlier while you were twenty minutes late. Um, <laughs> feel All bad right, so we're for up him. To three. <laughs> yeah. Feel bad for the Lions guy because you know I watch chat and just every once in a while it'll be hey random seventy-five overall on the block and he'll post it like ten times and nobody responds because nobody <laughs> wants anyone on the Lions. I mean, you could almost build a better team from the free agents. So. Pretty darn close, yeah. It's it's tough. Uh, that's. I looked at that team for about ten seconds when we were doing the team draft, and I knew I'd be at the bottom just because they had a Cuda. Yeah, and but yep. that was the only redeeming quality in that team. Even Swift, it's nice to have that rookie running back, but he's only got like ninety speed. Um, they just absolutely robbed the rookie running backs this season. Yeah, um, I felt all of their ratings were were pretty terrible. Prime's done a good job with Taylor. Um, but he's about like the only one that's been, yeah, even and somewhat okay. And even Taylor, uh, Dobbins is pretty good for uh for the Ravens. True, but, yeah. But both of them have, they're both teams that are already winning. Yeah. I mean, Colts maybe didn't have the best roster to start, but uh, right. with Prime playing with them, obviously they're going to make the playoffs, and you get that extra dev time, and yep. and not to yep. mention just playing better with them helps them dev too. So the Lions yeah. guy, he's got it rough. Maybe if if he doesn't get frustrated and he can make it. To the end of the cycle, maybe by the end he has a team that can go 500. I don't know. It's that's a rough team to have to play with. Yeah, it's definitely an uphill battle. Um, I was uh, I was very thankful for the the last minute uh, last minute dropout in the team draft because otherwise yeah. I was 32 and I'm yep. looking at the Lions <laughs> and, and then the Lions are yours. <laughs> so, so. Yeah, right. And so I think I ended up at 31 instead, and I got uh, I got the Vikings. <laughs> Um, Which I can't believe they fell that far. Yeah, shocked. Yeah, stunned. I was, I was eyeing them up. I started noticing them. I think it was like around pick eighteen or nineteen. I was like, "What are the Vikings still doing on the board?" And then, uh, sure enough, they went all the way down there. I was like, "Shoot!" Like it's, it's no question. Yeah. Yeah. Let They're me know old, how you feel about that whatever. in about three more seasons. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely going to be a question when you know Harrison Smith's in a wheelchair and you know <laughs> Eric Kendricks is gone. So we'll see, but. Well, yeah, because that's what's helping the Lions right now is he's losing a yeah. lot. So yeah. he's, he's building up first round picks, and you know his team should improve. Your team, you're not getting first round pick or top top of the first round picks anyway. So, no, that's for sure. And the ones I've gotten in the first have been trash, so yeah. <laughs> that's not a good thing either. So we'll see how the uh, how the cycle pans out for those two teams. But uh, yeah. speaking of teams that need some help, uh, the Steelers lose again to the Panthers. 35 to 12. Uh, Royce is winning the games that he's supposed to, but that's pretty much it for him too. Uh, he's four and two, but I think his record actually should be three and three, but he, I guess he quit out or something. Something weird happened with him in lawyers game. It's where he should have got the loss. And 
I think they were they were replaying a disconnect or something, and he he quit mm. after they finished their portion and gave him the win. So whoops. Uh, next up is the uh, Ravens beat the Browns twenty eight seventeen, and then the Seahawks Tiny gets his first win against the Chiefs that just beat the Raiders. So. Uh, you just never know with this game, man. You never know. Yeah, and then we do have one Week 7 game that we can go ahead and hit on since it was going to be one of our picks for this week, but That's they went ahead and already played it, and it was the Colts and the Ravens. I only caught a little bit of this game because after about the second drive for uh, the Colts, the stream kind of started acting weird. It went to a blue screen, then it was a black screen. By the time I got it to reload, it was uh, fourth quarter, and the Colts were already up like 22-14. to 14. It ended 25-14, so I didn't see much of it, um, but I think it ended pretty much how I expected was with mm-hmm. Indianapolis over the Ravens. I don't know. I was picking NYT in my upset of the week there, but I'm glad that game got played before we were past it. <laughs> I mean, we can still count it. I would have taken the Colts. <laughs> Fast, who would you have taken? Oh, I would have taken the Colts. Oh, yeah, so we'll, we can just still count that. No problem. We'll just go on the honor system here. But, but that's yeah, going right? to do it for our uh, our Daddy League's recap. Um, and that's going to move us into our, our current prediction standing. So this is where, where everybody's sitting right now after two, uh, two shows. So Faz right now, 11 and five on his picks. I'm sitting at nine and seven. So I gotta, I gotta make up two games. And then our guest picker spot right now is at seven and nine. So everybody's really counting on two step to kind of pick up the, uh, the slack here. And with that, let's, let's jump right into these predictions. So Obviously, I said that uh, the Week 7 game of the Colts and the Ravens, we'll just go ahead and uh, wipe that off because that one's already been played. But the first one up is going to be Denver and Dan against Miami and Pauly. This one... uh, Playoff rematch. It is a playoff rematch, and uh, I'm really excited to see how this one goes. I think I'm going to take... I'm going to take Dan in this one. But I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be really close. Um, oh, you're still there. I feel like I might have lost you. Yeah, I'm still here. If you can hear me, I can still yeah, hear I'm you. I'm lost him too. I don't hear him. Yeah, I don't hear him either. All right. We lost them all can, sorts of ways. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yeah there he is. I okay. You. I don't know. I I could still hear you and everything, but I'll just oh, edit that, that, that part out. All right. Cool. <laughs> um. All right. So we're still recording. So, um, cool. yeah, I think it's going to be Dan in a close one. Uh, I think Paulie's really getting his defense to come around. Uh, but but Matt may have also kind of given the blueprint on how to beat Pauly. So I'm going to go with Dan in a close one. What do you think, Two-Step? Yeah, I think um, Dan's going to win this one too. I think Pauly will keep it close, but at the end, I think Dan comes away with a win. All right. Fab? Yeah, I have to agree with you guys. Um, you know, Pauly obviously has the defense. He has – you know, the run game, he has all of the components to keep the game close, but I think uh, Dan just has a little more upside in the defense, uh, and he plays, you know, pretty comparable defense, um, definitely at the same level. Um, so I, I think that's going to gonna limit Polly's offense enough, and Dan takes this one. All right. So then we'll skip the Colts and Ravens, and the next one's going to be the Panthers and the Cardinals. Uh, these guys kind of play, play back and forth. I think Meat's team, especially when we get to the top seven, I think is significantly uh, higher ranked in the NFC than uh, than Royce, but for some reason he always gives Meats trouble. But uh, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with Meats uh, also in a close, high scoring game. Faz, what do you think? Uh, I'm gonna do the same. I've picked against Meats a couple times this season already, um, and it's mostly worked out. But I think in this one. I think he's just going to be a little too much to handle. Royce just hasn't shown much defensively. Obviously, he can score, um, but to beat Meats, you you need to be able to you know play defense, lock up, and there's just so many different things to worry about that I'm not sure Royce can keep up on that side of the ball. All right, two step. Yeah, I agree. I'm not going to gain any ground here by picking the same, but I have to go with Meats in this one also. All right. So the next game we have uh, this one, I kind of. Didn't even think about it until I looked at the uh, the schedule. But the Raiders and the Rams going against each other. This kind of looked to me like a an interesting matchup. Because I think the Rams can be beat through the air. And uh, I think that's where Future feel, feels most comfortable with his offense is throwing the ball to Ruggs. So who do you have in this game, Two-Step? 
I think I'm going to go with RD. I think uh, the Rams, I think they're, I think they'll be able to run it on future in the Raiders. All right. Fast. This is, um, this one's tough. I, I can absolutely see this going either way. I don't see a team that I necessarily feel is a clear favorite in this one. Um, I think I'm going to take future, um, just because of the, the passing point that you brought out. Um, I think that Ruggs is going to be able to kind of wreck some havoc. Um, Josh Jacobs can do enough on the ground, but uh, the way you're be- you're going to beat the Rams is going to be passing the ball. I think that plays a little better into Future's game plan. So I'm going to go with the Raiders in this one. All right, so I brought up the passing portion uh, to basically get you to take the Raiders. So I'm going to take the Rams in this one, uh, hoping to make up a, <laughs> a game. And, uh, User lurk. I do, th- I do <laughs> think that the, the Raiders have a chance. And to be honest, the reason... I take the Rams here is because I think this game is a toss up and I need to make up a game on you. Um, so you were going to pick whichever one I didn't. pick. Yeah. I was picking against you no matter what. It just happened to work out that I said pass a game and you just took the bait. So, <laughs> uh, cause I do give a, a little bit of the advantage to the Rams. They've, they've got the better record right now. They're, they're playing better. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was already leaning. Yeah, He's had way. a bit of a tough time getting over, you know, the hump in like these close games yeah. on um, these kind of toss up matchups. So I, I think that might play into future's favor. Um, but future, I mean, he's just a wild card. Uh, he could come out and lose this game by 30. I feel. Yeah. But or gonna, he could win I'm it by 30. Or, I don't, he, or he could win it by 30. Yeah. Just I'm going to still pick him to win regardless. Yeah. That's too late. I locked you in. All right. Yeah, there so, you go. Uh, <laughs> and then we have uh, Washington and Dallas. Now this will be the second time they met up. And the first time Washington blew out Graham's, um, but we, like we've said, we don't really know what to make of this guy yet. He's 5-1, and one, so obviously he does win the games. But uh, losing to Coop as your only loss, uh, probably should have lost to Prime, but the pass interference, I mean, still counts. So uh, who do you have in this game, Fess? Uh, I have Grams in this one. Um, obviously, you know, we saw the, the lopsided week one. Um, I think Grams is going to be more prepared. He's going to, you know, kind of know what's coming. Um, and – Obviously, like it's tough to beat the same team twice in a season. Um, so I, th- I think with a little bit of more prep, I think uh, I think Grams can take the second matchup here. All right, two step. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I'm going to go with Grams also. I think uh, that week one he wasn't ex- no, didn't know what to expect from him, and I think he'll make the adjustments and he'll come out on top on this one. All right, so I'm going to try and make up a second game. Uh, my bold prediction was that Washington gets the number one seed in the NFC. So obviously I'm going to stick with Washington here against Dallas. I think it's a little bit closer now that Graham's maybe has a little bit more of a read on what to expect from him, but I'm still going to go with Washington here. Uh, that'll do it for week seven. So next up would be week eight. And this is one of the games I'm looking forward to is Bucks and the Rams again. Always seems to be pretty good when these two teams play. Uh, last time they met up, I think was the playoff game. That I still think the Rams should have won. Uh, he let that one get away. But, that was uh, the Jalen Ramsey game, wasn't it? Yep, where Jalen Ramsey just kind of walked under a ball he should have picked. But I'm going to go with the Bucks this time. Um, I've picked the Rams a couple times to win in, against the Bucks, and it's bit me. So I'm going to take Dookie this time. Uh, Two-step, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I think Dookie, as much as I hate to say it, he's a good player. <laughs> he'll He'll take this game. All right, fast. What do you think? Yeah, I'm staying on board with Dookie here. Um, until I see RD get over that hump, uh, the Dookie hump, it's gonna be uh, gonna be tough to pick against him. However, bonus heat check, bold prediction: if these two teams meet in the playoffs again, mm-hmm. that's when RD gets his first win. All right, so you uh, you heard it here. RD is now bonus coverage in the playoffs, and he's gonna lose to Dookie. Thanks to fast. Realistically, I said that because I don't want to play his run game. There you go. <laughs> so we're we're testing we're testing that uh, we're testing that theory. All right. So next up, and I tried to try to mix in some teams that we don't necessarily talk about as much. Uh, we have the Chiefs and the Titans or uh, Texans. Both teams coming in with one win. Um, obviously, pending their Week Seven games. But who do you have in this game, Faz? <laughs> Not confident either. Um, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with the Chiefs. I like the personnel over uh, the Houston defense. Um, I just think trying to chase around Tyreek is gonna be a little too much, and I'm gonna gonna give the nod to the Bazooka. All right, two step. I agree. Uh, the Chiefs roster they 
there's no way they should lose this game. I'll take the Chiefs. Yeah, so like you said, with the Chiefs roster, I don't think there's any way he should lose probably 90% of the games that he plays with that roster. Uh, just that <laughs> offense alone should be putting up 40 points a game. Um, but I'm going to go with, with Houston. I need to make up games, and October made – he made the playoffs uh, first season with that Texan squad, and I think he's gonna he's gonna pull out of the game against the Chiefs here. So I'm gonna go with him to beat the Chiefs. Uh, the next probably a game of the week for Week Eight: uh, Jets at Bills. And uh, we'll start with you, Two Step. Who do you think in the Jets Bills game? Both of them have similar records right now, but uh, Bills just just beat them what uh, last week, Week Five, I think. Yeah, I see that. No no one in a laugh or like week six against the Jets. I look for him to do it again. I'll take the Bills. All right, Faz, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's going to be closer than the last meeting, but uh, I'm going to stick with Noel in this one. He's coming in three straight. Um, not necessarily high-quality teams that he's beaten, but, you know, those are still wins. They're still, they still add up. Momentum can kind of build. Um, so I think he can get the, get the season sweep here. Yeah, speaking of sweeps, I think uh, this one's going to be a sweep. I'm going to take the Bills as well. Um, I just haven't seen anything out of the Jets that could uh, really sway my opinion on that. Uh, I know Pauly had them in his top ten, the truth. I was but, I was uh, going to say, they're not, not going to make your top ten in the, uh, yeah, the AFC here? No. Um, <laughs> and I think he even had them in his top ten after they got a sim win. I don't even think it was a, a game that he played, so... Yeah, I'm going to take the Bills, and I don't think it's going to be close. Uh, and then we have another another matchup of two uh, one-win teams, the Chargers and the Seahawks. Who do you have in this one, Faz? Um, I feel like Tiny has been playing better. I'm going to go with the Chargers, though. Um, I like the defensive personnel. I think he can control the ball a little better. Um, so I, I think in a probably close, low-scoring game, I'm going to take the Chargers. All right, two-step. I want to say tiny here, but without DK, man, I hope he loses every game after that trade. I'll take the Chargers. I will also take the Chargers. Uh, I think the Chargers are going to be able to run the ball on him, and I think that's what they want to do is run the ball. Um, their their defense has been kind of kind of back and forth. Can't decide whether they're they're a good defense. He had six sacks against ZZ, but uh, and I think twelve on the year, so six the rest of the games. So. <laughs> But I think I think Tiny is a guy that you can get sacks against, and uh, he's going to really miss DK Metcalf, whether he wants to admit it or not. And I'm sure he'll he'll lie and say he doesn't miss DK Metcalf, <laughs> but uh, there's no way you don't miss DK Metcalf. That's just not possible because you're not replacing it oh, with anybody close. He's got he's got Tyler Lockett though. That's right. He's had, had to lock up Tyler Lockett for long term. Had to let DK walk. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. So yeah, I'm going to go Chargers in that one. And uh, that'll take us to our final week, week nine. We got three games from week nine. Uh, first of which is going to be the 49ers and the Rams. And I'm taking RD and the Rams in this one. And I don't think it's going to be close. What do you got, Faz? Uh, I do think it will be close. Um, but with that said, I have picked against RD in the last two weeks. So I'm going to throw him some love in this one. I'm going to pick him over Dump here. All right, two step. Yeah, man, if Dump wants to make the playoffs in the NFC, he needs to win this game. I'll take Dump. All right. Uh, Second game is going to be the Buccaneers and Dookie taking on the Ravens. Uh, Maybe Dookie just lets NYT win just because he doesn't feel comfortable beating the Ravens. I mean, Lamar Jackson is the greatest thing to walk on water. (laughs) Um, But I'm going to go with Dookie in this one. Even I I just don't think he's going to have too much of a problem with NYT because NYT tends to – Tends to have a few more turnovers than most guys. Uh, he gets a little reckless with Lamar Jackson and with that hit stick and then uh, his user in the defensive backfield. I think Dookie's going to have a, a pretty easy game here. I think he's going to win by like 14. Uh, Two-step, what do you think? I'm going to put Dookie on upset alert here. I'm going to take NYT. Okay. Since the uh, since you weren't able to take NYT against the Colts, you have to give him another <laughs> yeah. upset in week, week nine. I got it. <laughs> Didn't work out. We make up some ground here. All right, Faz, what do you think? I'll be honest. I thought I was going to be alone, but I I think I'm actually going to do the same. Um, First, NYT, I might PM you six times before you play this game. Turn on conservative. I'm telling you right now, just do it. (laughs) 
turn on conservative before the first play. Don't even worry about it. The Jukes, they aren't worth it. Um, I think if he does that, it can help him limit the turnovers. Um, Dukey plays reckless on defense, and the Ravens can really pick apart that kind of defense. Um, once Lamar starts running around, contains don't work. There's not a lot Dukey can do for it. Um, so I, I don't know. I think that this one could be something that surprises. Um, and I'm going to take NYT here. So I'm, I'm giving you a window to, uh, to get right, a game so this, here. There's my chance. But there's your shot. All right. And that's because gonna, I'm so confident in all my other ones. That's going to bring us to our last game. We'll see how confident you are in this one. We'll let you pick first. Oh, boy. Rowan, who just beat the, uh, the Vikings not too long ago, will take on uh, Grams and the Cowboys. Now, they met up after Rowan changed his flight. Like He's, <laughs> he's showing up at the airport at 2 in the morning trying to get on standby. Makes his flight, gets to uh, play his Week 17 game, and gets knocked out of the playoff competition or playoff contention. <laughs> so, In pretty ugly fashion too. It was it was really a shame. Yeah, it ended up not even being close. Uh, who do you have in this one in their rematch? Um, I have been on the Rowan hype train since the beginning, but with that said, I'm going Grams here. Um, I like the matchup better for Grams. I think the game plays better into Grams style. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna go Grams. Sorry, right. Rowan. Two step. Yeah, I'm going to go with Grams also. I think uh, the old dog keeps the young buck in check in this one. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Grams as well. Uh, I think he's playing better than Rowan right now, even though Rowan may be figuring stuff out on defense. Uh, he, he did pretty good against sure that Vikings like team. So, <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick against him one more week, and then we'll see, see if he can make a believer out of me with these next three games he's got. But that's going to do it for our predictions and uh, so what we'll do next is let's, uh, before we move on to our, our uh, top seven, let's go ahead and go over our bold predictions and see how we're, how we're panning out so far. Oh. And uh, <laughs> so my first bold prediction was the Lions to go 0-16. I'd say I'm well on the way to that one. Uh, well on the way. And I don't see anything changing. Uh, Can you really consider that bold, though? <laughs> I mean, at the beginning of the season, I, I, I would say somebody's going to win one game. Um, but now <laughs> it's I bold won't. because it hasn't happened yet. Um, yeah. But we, we certainly feel like we're on our way. So, yeah, it seems like everybody wins one game. Um, yeah. Until this season. <laughs> and uh, so the next next prediction was fast Colts 16 and 0. Not really anything to talk about there. That's already. <laughs> See, the sad part about this, too, is that he got past like two of his hardest games. Yeah. Um, he kind of breezed past Dan, he beat you. Uh, and then sure enough, you know, I get messed up by a, a PI on a Hail Mary. Unbelievable. Yeah. Now uh, I just have to hope that he loses another one before the end of the regular season. Cause I'm going to be pissed if that's his only loss. <laughs> I think he might lose one. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure mean, somebody, I got to root for you. Somebody now. will. You got to go beat him. Oh, oh me? Well, maybe me. Who knows? Uh, so the next prediction was the saints, 10 losses. Saints right now sitting at one and five. I feel pretty good about that bold prediction. Uh, he's coming off a season where I think he was nine and seven, and I thought that was just way, way above where he should be. And uh, I think he's going to get ten losses. I think he may end up with more than that. But uh, so your next prediction was two step wins the AFC North. How do you feel about that one, two step? Hey man, I think I'm only two games out of first right now. Anything can happen. Long season still. Yeah, that one's and definitely NYT got still a tough play. schedule too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, still hope, baby. Yeah, that one. You're still alive in that one. My next prediction was that Washington takes the number one seed. Uh, only issue is going to be he's got a he's got a root for a Dukey loss. Although we've had uh, some people pick against Dukey in in these next three games, so it's possible he could could sneak into that number one seed still. Um, this next one for you though. I think it's going to be a, it's a busted prediction, but it's the, that the Browns regret taking that rookie quarterback and getting rid of Baker Mayfield just from, from chat. I don't think he's uh he's regretting letting Baker walk. No, I think he's going to stubbornly hold on to that one. I also think that part of the prediction was I gave a timeline and I think that we're actually already past it. So I think I lost. <laughs> yeah. I think he did say the first six weeks or something. Yeah. I think um, I, said, I said, I think I said week five or six. Yeah. And then I think Dan said it would be like week three. But uh, but yeah, I, I think I, I think I might have lost that one. Um, then the next one was mine. This is the one that I I don't think I'm gonna I'm gonna hit on anymore. Uh, Dukey getting five losses. 
after beating Meats and Dump, I, th I think the five losses is probably probably out of the question at this point. Uh, he needed to lose at least one of those games. Probably if both he of buys them. my Helen Keller ebook, it might happen. That's true. But uh, but we'll see. Let's we'll see if we can <laughs> get him to start taking yet. notes from that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and then your your last prediction also probably not going to happen. The Chargers taking the number two seed in the AFC West and getting the wild card. He's uh, killing me. <laughs> he's going to have to work on getting his number two win first. Uh, yeah, he's so that killing one's me. That's, not that's working just, out for you. That's just sad. <laughs> so I would say the fast kiss of death is pretty pretty consistent. I mean, now Colts still only have one loss, so that's it's not like their season's over. But your prediction is way off. That was that was an ugly loss though. That's, that's like a heartbreaking loss. Yeah. Um, two step could still win the AFC North, so that one's still in play. Browns definitely don't regret their quarterback at this point. Whether they did it week five or six, I don't know, but it's, it seems to have worked out for him since he put up almost a hundred uh, between the last two weeks combined. And then uh, Chargers beats Dan last season, and now he's got one win. So. Dude has 27 near superstar defensive linemen. Come on, man. Get a yeah. sack. You're so I'm gonna, me. Or, I'm at gonna, least, or at least trade one to me. I'm going to blame Faz for the uh, the curse. That's got to be the only explanation for it. Just wait for what I have in store for season two. All right. Well, before we get to season two, let's start on our, uh, our AFC and NFC top teams. Um, so we've got our top teams, where we project they're going to be. And we'll start with you for your top team. Or your number seven team in the AFC? Who do you have? Number seven team, I feel, could have been a couple different options. I wasn't really confident in any of them. I have the Browns. Um, he's basically getting the wins that he should get. Nothing more impressive than that. Um, but given the rest of the teams fighting for that spot, uh, I got to give it to the Browns. All right. I can agree with that. Two-step, you think the Browns deserve to be a top seven team? Oh, yeah. I think Woods is... He he's he'll figure that team out. I wouldn't be surprised if he wins the AFC North. Okay. Hey hey hey, chill. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. It's supposed to be you. Yeah, it's your division. Oh, yeah, that's right. Come on, I'll baby. The, Mama mentality. He'll, he'll be the wild card. I'll win the division. All right. So let's move over to the <laughs> NFC. My number seven team is Grams and the Cowboys. And I had him here last heat check. He had him at number seven. He hasn't really done anything to change that spot. Uh, he had wins over the Texans and the Eagles and then a loss to the Buccaneers. Uh, Bucks, obviously, they're going to be higher on this list, so that was kind of expected. And then wins over the Texans and the Eagles, both kind of expected. Those are one-win teams. Um, but he is 0-2 versus teams with winning records, so that's a little concerning. Uh, but if, if you look at the NFC as a whole, I think that still leaves him at, as the seventh best in the NFC. So I got Grams at number seven. All right, who's your uh, number six team? Number six, I have NYT and the Ravens, another NFC North team. Um, again, kind of getting the wins he's supposed to. He has a tough schedule. Um, I'd like to see him take out one of these top teams when he plays them, um, but I believe right now he's 0-2. Uh, I believe it's Broncos and Dolphins. I don't think he's played any of the other ones. Um, so, yeah, right now just kind of status quo, doing his thing. Um, that six, seven and later range in the AFC is, is pretty tough to call, but, uh, I think he's hovering right there at six until I can see him take out some better competition. Yeah. That's, that's the kind of the, the downfall of winning the division is you get that first place, uh, first place schedule. And it's not like, you know, the real NFL where, where teams have down years, it's pretty consistent who you're going to play. And yeah. And regardless of the team, it's going to be a tough matchup. So, uh, my number six team. And I, I kind of flip-flopped on these two with, between uh, six and seven. Um, but I still have Dump there. Uh, Dump could just as easily be outside of my my top seven, too. He's got losses to the Raiders and the Bucks during this this uh, schedule period. Uh, to me, the NFC is the top five and then everyone else. Uh, San Francisco has just – he's just struggled against anybody that's uh, – you had the three and three Panthers. He struggled against them. The one win Saints. He struggled against them, and the the one win Chargers. He struggled against them. None of the he's not blowing out the teams that don't have a lot of wins. He's just sneaking by them. So he could just as easily not have a win. Um, so Dump's got to get back on track for me to keep him in this top seven. But uh, for right now, the way the NFC is kind of stacking up, I still have him at number six. 
yeah, he's got to figure out defense or even if it's not figure out defense, he's got to at least cobble together something of a defense. Um, giving up 45 points a game is eventually going to gonna dog you. Yeah, and it, what surprises me is he's he doesn't have a bad team. He's not Hova out here with the Lions. Mm-hmm. He's got the right. 49ers. He had, I think, like the sixth pick in the draft. I mean, it was – you have a top team and you're not playing like a top team. So I'm I'm expecting to see Dump kind of turn it around before the cycle's over. All right, so yeah. back to the AFC. Who do you have at number five? AFC number five, uh, going to the AFC East here. Um, Pauly and the Dolphins, uh, I know he probably doesn't think that he deserves a top five spot, but uh, his defense and run game says otherwise. Um, lost to the Dolphins, knocked him down a spot. Um, or not the Dolphins, he is the Dolphins. Lost to the uh, the Patriots, knocked him down a spot. Um, but, you know, he's definitely still clearly a top five team in the AFC, I think. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody could argue that. Uh, he's definitely... I think he'll... he's the only one who does. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, he'll tell you that he's you yeah. know, lucky to be <laughs> within thirty of anybody, but yeah, I don't, I don't know what's worse, him, him uh, downplaying his team or Dookie talking himself up. It's, it's kind of <laughs> polar opposites. They're like their their own yin and yang. <laughs> but so with that, we'll move to the NFC, and my number five team in the NFC is Rams with RD. Uh, he has wins over the Giants, but he lost to the Cardinals, and then I think he had a bye during this time period as well. His only two losses that he's got so far are to Dan and uh, and Meats, so he's he's losing to teams that are are really good. So I think I think five is a good spot for him, um, especially with who the next four are going to be. For sure. Um, four staying in the same division, uh, AFC East. I've got, uh, the new England Patriots. Um, he's coming off two big wins. Uh, he beat Polly. Um, he beat that bum Viking squad with the Helen Keller offense. Um, he has got a boring offense. Um, it will literally lull you to sleep while you're playing. Um, but in Madden 21, man, it works. Uh, he limits your possessions. And if you make one mistake, you're already kind of digging yourself a hole and he can just, uh, continue to pound the rock and it's tough to play against. So he, uh, he jumps into my number four spot. Yeah. And with everybody kind of, uh, some of the guys that knew him anyway, we're, we're talking him up as he joined the league. So mm-hmm. I think between that and the fact that it looks like he might be getting this team where he wants it, that's probably a good spot for him. At least now, uh, so Polly will have a little bit of competition over in that AFC East, regardless of how good he says everybody in the AFC East was, I think he even had figs win in a division and figs was lucky to win a game. So, uh, it, it'll be fun to watch that AFC East and see how that, that all works out over the rest of the cycle. Uh, NFC in the East or NFC fourth seed. I've got you and, uh, the Vikings just because the last two games, I mean, I don't know what's going on over there with that, uh, that new Helen Keller playbook, but definitely had to drop Sell you the down. E-book. Five dollars on Venmo at it's the Foz. Yeah, because uh, you had a win over the Bears. <laughs> Bears haven't been that impressive this season, but then losses to the Giants and the Patriots, two in a row. Still haven't got back in the win column, so I'm sure you're you're getting ready to play your next game as soon as possible to to fix that. But for now, I got you number for, four. Uh, in Dan's league, man, I I played Dan's son last night. I was so pissed at Madden. I just took it all out on him. <laughs> <laughs> that poor kid i dropped like 42 unanswered points on him <laughs> well unfortunately that doesn't help your uh your your SNL doesn't help me at all so. here but <laughs> yep but good for you um, being up on a little kid yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of those kids he's dangerous man you just never know he can come out and score 70 at mm-hmm. any point um so number three i've got uh i've got you um obviously the the loss to prime set you back a little bit um the good news is you're going to play him again. You get another shot to uh, to climb back up. But, you know, with, with the one loss, it's going to kick you down a spot here, put you in the three hole. Yeah, I can, I can agree with that. Probably should be lower on the, on the, uh, the ranking, but I'll, I'll take three. All right. Relax, Polly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've been 10 and 10 and six and 11 and five. So I'm not lighting up the regular season. Uh, both times. I think I, well, the 10 and six season, I won the AFC South. Uh, both me and Prime had uh, had similar records there, and then last season I lost the AFC South to him. He came in at fourteen and two, so uh, I'm just sneaking into the playoffs. It's just then I seem to do better once I get in there. But in the NFC, so I've got 
I've got Meats in the Cardinals at number three. Uh, he's played pretty well. I feel like he's kind of kind of fading into the background of the NFC a little bit. He doesn't seem to be standing out as much as uh, the first season. And maybe that's just because you get you keep seeing the same Cardinals team in the same spot winning over and over. You kind of get used to it. But um, he had r- wins over the Saints and the Rams, but then another loss to the uh, the Broncos. But Broncos are in the AFC. That's that really doesn't have too much effect on the NFC rankings. So, uh, and and pretty much everyone other than Prime thus far has lost to the Broncos if they've played them. So I've got Meats coming in at number three. Yep, and then uh, speaking of those Broncos, I have them at number two. Um, you know, we pretty much said that we'd have him at one until uh, until somebody beat him. Uh, he got knocked off by Prime uh, pretty convincingly, honestly. Um, so you know that that docks the uh, docks the ranking a little bit, uh, puts him down at, at the two spot. Yeah, I don't, I can't disagree with that. They just played, so you kind yep. of have to move them. Uh, and it wasn't like it was a fluke play or anything. So, <laughs> right. Uh, NFC number two. And just to piss him off, I've got Dookie at number two. Uh, he's got wins over oh, the man. Cowboys, the Bengals, and the 49ers. Um, but I'll tell you what, the second half of his schedule is where he can make a believer out of me. I'll still put him at number two. But uh, Bomber he's, the got, Savage. he's got the Rams coming up. He's got the Ravens coming up. He's got the Vikings, who hopefully will have it figured out by then. And then he's got the Browns as well. Um, if he can make it through that whole schedule and, and, uh, and not have a loss, then I'll be, I'll be pretty impressed and I'll let him be, uh, a high two, but he'll still be two. So, uh, so that's <laughs> keep the number fire. two for the NFC. Um, number one in the AFC, probably not much of a surprise after unveiling the last two teams, but, uh, you got to go with the guy who knocked him off. Um, the 16 time champ, uh, the goat, He's back in the number one spot. I'm sure he's going to let everyone hear it after this show is released. But, uh, hey, man, you get the wins. You, you get the spot. Yeah, uh, he, he went through uh, Washington, Dan, and then me and came out 2-1 and one with a winning record through there. So uh, you can't knock him. I don't think the gap is as big as, as he would like it to be. Um, but I think that's, the, that's pretty much the way with the entire SML. And you see it. Just looking at like these these games that we've we've been going through when we go through the league, the daddy leagues, and you know y- you find yourself every week going, oh, I can't believe that that happened, or I don't can't believe that outcome. I think a lot of the teams are a lot closer, maybe one through like nine or ten. Anyone could win any of those games because um, like looking at the AFC, I don't see a single team on there that I couldn't see myself losing to. Um, there's very rare I'll look at my schedule and go. I think I got that one. That's an easy win. Um, they all they all yeah. kind of look like they could be tough. So, yeah. Uh, but he's definitely separated himself as the top team in the AFC. So with that, yep. we'll move over to the top team in the NFC, and that's where I've got Washington better than Dookie. I've got a uh, Q number one. He says he's tired of being called the new uh, the new guy in Washington. He, he wants guys <laughs> to call him Q or QP. So. We've got Q at number one in the NFC. Uh, he had wins over the Colts, the Packers, and the Giants. Um, and then he blew out both of the other two top teams in the NFC East, uh, in the, the uh, Giants and the Cowboys. So uh, that's pretty impressive. The only loss he's got is to the Titans, which uh, we were talking about this earlier before we started filming when you were 20 minutes late. And uh, <laughs> Coop, can, <laughs> Coop can play with anybody, especially if he – doesn't get away from Derrick Henry. Um, his mm-hmm. team's very dangerous. So that being your only loss uh, is pretty impressive. So I'll I'll give uh, Q the number one spot in the NFC. And uh, see, here's the thing though: when when you're with a team that uh, that is literally called the football team, yeah, you kind of like lose naming rights too. Like you just become like the guy with Washington. Like I don't, I don't know. It just it just goes too well. <laughs> Okay. The football team, the Washington guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, so Q is number one in the NFC, uh, and then Prime over in the AFC. So that's it for our uh, our predictions. And uh, I think I think Faz has something else he wants to do his uh his top list. So yeah. So we have a little bonus content for everybody. 
um, this week on uh, on Heat Check. This was inspired by a recent conversation that we had in in group chat. Um, if you missed it, it was quite an adventure. Um, and I, you know, started thinking about the topic and figure we could we could do a little ranking here. And this is um this is going to be a top five most humble list. Um, you know these <laughs> these guys that that are just spewing with humility. Um, they just never get the recognition they deserve. And I, I just wanted to make sure that we we could bring that to the table here. Um, so I want to start where we got a we got a top five list. Uh, number five, we have Prime talking about championships. Um, very humble. Very humble. Yeah, this is just not something that he brings up very often. Uh, I know he has a few of them. Um, I believe I said it was 16 when we were talking it, about his It team. may be. I mean, I... I don't even yeah. remember the last time it was brought up how many it was. So, I mean, it's just that. Yeah, humble somebody that will have know. to fact check the number yeah. um, because obviously he's so humble about it that we, we don't actually know how many it's been. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just want to make sure we give some true love to, to the champ there. Uh, make sure that his accolades are known. Um, at four, I have a, I have Connor McGregor. Um, this is a guy that obviously has gone about his business just quietly. Um, you know, never makes too much of a ruckus. Um, you know, just a, a normal, just struts into the ring, does a, does a lap, no, no, no uh, shenanigans, no nothing. He just yeah. goes in, does his thing, uh, nice and quiet, and just want to make sure that's recognized. Uh, three, little Marvel, uh, Marvel reference. You know, for for any comic guys around here, we have uh, we have Ego the Living Planet. Um, obviously, with the name of Ego the Living Planet, um, that, that just speaks humility, um, and I just think that's something that needs to be recognized. Uh, his his whole plot of world domination by um, I believe it was making himself every single planet in the universe. Um, I can't think of a more humble goal personally. Uh, and I think that needs to be, be recognized. Uh, number two um, person very near and dear to my heart, uh, Kanye West. Um, I believe you really could substitute any rapper here. Um, there's so much humility in the rap game. Um, you know, super wholesome music, lyrical content uh, for all. Um, and Kanye, I just think, you know, exemplifies that, um, just constantly, you know, humility all around, uh, you know, would never be calling too much attention to himself. Um, and, you know, I wanted to make sure that was recognized And the number one, obviously, um, the easiest, easiest rank we've done all day, um, our very own Lil Dookie, Lil Dicky, Dallas, the Savage, number one, most humble. Um, oh yeah. If you were to look up, himself, uh, if you were to look up humble in the dictionary, it would probably have picture a picture of him. Of him. <laughs> it wouldn't even wouldn't even be him though because he would have it changed to something yeah humble. yep he'd put somebody else there uh he you know he doesn't want us talking about he doesn't want to talk about himself which you know i always appreciate um you know he just comes in plays his games you know so, sometimes he wins sometimes he doesn't it's not about the wins for him it's not no. about the wins it's not about the recognition he just you know wants to come in and and just make sure that he's friends with everybody and uh you know that kind of humility should be should be rewarded so no what's nice is you sure can you got... can say anything in chat and he won't make it about himself uh, <laughs> never, he's, he's, never. Just, he's just super humble won't just chime in out of nowhere about it somehow how it's related to him he's super humble about it um, super um, humble about it so yeah. dookie we appreciate your humility man thank you for for gracing our presence with it i mean um, he's so humble he put himself third in his most humble list so <laughs> He's yeah, it looks like I thought it was first. Yeah, he looks might like have I'll been. be absent from chat after this is aired. Yeah. So that's been uh, this week's episode of Heat Check. Uh, Want to say a special thanks to Two Step for being on with us and putting up with us for the last uh, fifty-nine minutes. So an hour, hour and twenty minutes if you count how late he was. That's right. It was an hour and twenty minutes. Thank you, Fess. And, and then he leaves early, so that's perfect. <laughs> All right. Uh, Till next Crazy. week. This has been Heat Check. <laughs> We'll see you guys later. Later. Let me get a heat check, heat check, heat check, heat check, heat check, heat check, heat. Can I get a heat check, heat check, heat check, heat check, heat check, heat check?